வணக்கம் தி மஸ்ட் நோ சீரீஸ் சிம்பிளிஃபைங் லேர்னிங் கிளினிக்கல் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் இன் அல்லர் நர்வ் பால்சி clinical examination of a hand which has been affected by ulnar nerve palsy or involvement does not stop with just talking about the different signs of ulnar nerve palsy there is much more to it and that is what we shall be seeing in this must know series on ulnar nerve palsy clinical examination when eliciting the history of a patient with a suspected ulnar nerve injury or a palsy we need to consider the duration since injury or the duration of symptoms that have occurred a history of drug intake for hansens is also important in some regions of the world where hansens has been rampant and also the occupation of the patient when we begin the clinical examination we begin with the inspection of the shoulder and elbow a routine motor examination of the shoulder should be done to rule out other involvement as can occur in a brachial plexus injury the shoulder internal rotation test is done here the patient is asked to place the shoulder at 90 degree abduction complete internal rotation the elbow kept in 90 degree flexion and complete supination and the fingers and the wrist are extended if the symptoms of ulnar nerve involvement like pins and needles sensation on the fingers appears within 10 seconds it is said to indicate compression of the ulnar nerve at the cubital tunnel when inspecting the elbow apart from inspecting the range of motion that is possible at the elbow we need to measure what is known as the carrying angle which is the angle between the axis of the arm and the axis of the forearm this is normally about 10 to 15 degrees but it is increased in conditions of malunion of supracondylar fracture of the humerus which can lead to stretching of the ulnar nerve when we come to the inspection of the hand which is where the involvement of the ulnar nerve is maximum we need to see the attitude of the fingers where the classical claw deformity may be seen in an isolated ulnar nerve palsy involving the ring and little fingers trophic ulcers involving the tips of the fingers or the heads of the metacarpals over the palm or the base of the palm or even on the dorsum depending upon the usage of the hand by the patient the presence of smooth and shiny skin on the palm and fingers representative of the loss of autonomic sensation of the ulnar nerve territory or sometimes even dry scaly skin any wasting of the hypothenar muscles must be looked for and also flattening of the palm the wasting of interosseous muscles must also be looked for and this can be done by examining or inspecting the dorsum of the hand the wasting can be made out specifically in the interosseous areas and over the area of the first dorsal interosseous muscle comparison should also be done to the normal side when coming to palpation we need to begin the palpation by examination at the elbow we need to look for areas of tenderness above the region of the elbow over the area of the ulnar nerve we also need to look for ulnar nerve subluxation which can be palpated over the medial epicondyle we need to check for tinnel sign and the elbow flexion test needs to be done the elbow is kept completely flexed and fully supinated and the fingers and wrist are kept extended in this position if paresthesia occurs within 60 seconds it indicates cubital tunnel syndrome where the ulnar nerve is being compressed we also need to palpate the cubital tunnel to look for any mass lesions which may be compressing the ulnar nerve in the hand we need to palpate the tone of the hypothenar muscles and the ulnar nerve compression test needs to be done here pressure is applied with the finger of the examiner over the region of the gyans canal that is over the pisiform bone the symptoms of ulnar nerve compression would occur within 60 seconds if there is compression of the ulnar nerve at the gyans canal now we come to the important part of motor examination of ulnar nerve palsy before we go into the exact motor examination we shall now see the basic tenets associated with this examination obviously here we are planning to examine the loss of function of individual muscles by testing the individual muscles ultimately what is going to be achieved by the muscles is function 
So we need to actually test the function of the hand based on the action of the individual muscles. That brings us to two important concepts in any nerve palsy or any injury that is impairment and disability. Impairment is any loss or abnormality of psychological, physiological or anatomical structure or function. So, if a muscle is paralyzed, it means that is the impairment. On the other hand, disability refers to the restriction or lack of ability to perform an activity in the manner or within the range considered normal for a human being. We saw that paralysis of a muscle is known as the impairment. Because of the paralysis of that muscle, the patient or the hand would not be able to do a particular function. That is called the disability. Now let us try to understand this more clearly. Impairment is loss of an anatomical structure or function. Disability is the loss of function due to the anatomical loss. For instance, if a patient has lost a leg due to an accident, it is called the impairment. And because of the loss of the leg, patient will not be able to walk. This is known as the disability. Similarly, if there is a paralysis of the adductor pollicis muscle, it is known as the impairment. And because of the paralysis of the adductor pollicis muscle, one of the consequences is that patient cannot do an adequate pinch using the thumb and index fingers and this is known as the disability. We shall see all these disabilities that arise in ulnar nerve palsy in our next must-know series video.